Hey everyone, Keegan here from Curious Engineering. Uh, here doing the second lab from the Altera University program. Uh, again, in the previous videos, we finished off lab one, going over some pre generics. Uh, just a high level overview on lab two. What you're going to get into is a lot more of uh, using the seven segment displays. Uh, how do we output uh, numbers, uh, not just uh, three considerations, but uh, also how can we do some basic calculations? So, we're going to talk about the full adder. Uh, uh, logic element as well as the ripple carry adder, uh, some comparators, uh, so some some new new tools to add to your uh, uh, toolbox. And so without further ado, let's take a look at this one. This one should be a pretty quick one, so um, uh, it's just trying to get you off your feet. So part one, what they're really asking you to do is using uh, hex one and hex zero. Can you just display uh, uh, one through nine essentially like that? All those digits. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is with eight switches, actually, and four switches. Oh, you know what? Let me turn. Ooh, I'm not ready. Let me turn on my mouse pointer so you can see it. Hold that thought. I have to remember the code. Sorry about this. Um, okay, here we go. So we're going to use these two hexes, and then we're going to use eight switches, as I mentioned before. So we're going to use switch 7 through 4 just to represent one hex, and then we're going to use switch 3 through 0 to represent hex 0. So uh, based on our choices here, we will display different numbers. And the way we're going to do that is it's uh, the idea of a binary coded decimal. So a BCD, um, basically all that is, uh, it's also kind of similar to uh, a hexadecimal number, but um, we'll get into that a little bit here in this table. But what you're seeing here is... Uh, a truth table. This is a truth table. So uh, we'll delve into this. If you know this and you've done this before, feel free to skip ahead. If you haven't, then this should be a good kind of getting you up to speed so you understand what's happening here. So as you know, binary is just zero or one, and we're going to use four bits to represent the numbers zero or the digits zero through nine. And as an example, like how is this happening? It goes from the most significant bit to the least significant bit. So and it's on a power of 2, essentially, like that. So 2 to the 0, um, I think to the 0th power is just a 1. Uh, 2 to the power of itself is 2. And then 2 to the power of 2 is 4, and such and such. So the way we represent different numbers is uh, having a 1 or a 0 in each position, and then summing those up together to get our, our digits. So as an example, let's say we have this 4-bit uh, our most significant digit or bit is a uh, one, and then we have a zero, zero, one. So, if you look back here, so two to the third is eight, and then we sum zero, zero, and then two to the zero's power is a one. So if you sum those all together, that's that's how you represent a nine. So essentially, what you're seeing here is all the different uh, scenarios, unique scenarios that are possible with a four. Well, it's not that all that's possible. Uh, the ones that we actually care about, which I'll allude to here. So we only want to do decimal 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, essentially. Uh, as you can see here, I've kind of boxed off these other categories. As you see in the lab, they actually say, you know, we only care about the digits 0 through 9. Um, since we only have two hexes, if you start to get into 10, then you say, oh, okay, what happens? And that's what we'll talk about in uh, part 2 of this one. But they're saying, hey, treat uh, these portions of the truth table from 1010 to 1111 as don't cares. So that's what we're doing here. We're just kind of saying like, hey, we're not going to consider them for this lab, but uh, we will later in, in the lab. So, um, Cool. So you might be wondering, hey, how many numbers can we actually represent with binary? So the high level answer is you can represent any number, but it depends on how many bits you have. So for us, we only have four bits, so the the equation, how it works, is you have 2 to the 4th minus 1. So as you can see, we, we 2 to the 4th is 16 minus 1, because we always have to have this 0. We have to represent 0, correct? So um, just as an equation, that's 2 to the n minus 1, where n is the number of bits you have. So OK, um, so let's, let's talk about what we're going to do here. Um, in lab 1, part 4, and part 5, we created a table of uh, and I, if this is not making sense, I would I recommend going back to see those videos. But we created a table of all the different scenarios when we want to turn off 
certain segments of the seven segment display. And the way we did that is we, um, in each row, we allocated the segments, and then we, for each scenario, we're saying, hey, when do we want to turn off that segment? So uh, as you can see here, I've made this table, and then we're going to walk through each one, but um, just remember that for a Altera board, it's uh, when we essentially like drive that segment high, it's going to turn it off. So just keep that in the back of your mind. That's really important. You don't want to do the opposite, otherwise you're going to get very different behavior uh, as what you're anticipating. Okay, where do I want to go next? Again, we're just keeping the table so that we uh, remind ourselves of, of all the digits that we want to represent and then all the ones we don't care about. So, so if we look, I'm just going to briefly pull up the code here. Let me pull it over. And, I, and uh, I'm just going to do this just to say, in all the previous labs, we had a whole bunch of multiplexes everywhere. And then if you kind of quickly scan this, you say, Keegan, there's no muxes. Like, how are we going to accomplish this? And we're going to do something pretty clever. And you have to remember that uh, this table, when we fill this table out, this is a decoder for our particular scenario. So in this scenario, we only want to represent the digits 0 to 9. And when we build this table, that will all come down to this decoder unit, our seven segment decoder unit. So we're going to feed in just our switch scenarios directly into that and then based on that that'll output exactly what we want. So we don't need muxes, which is which is pretty cool here. So so let's step through um let's segment zero. As you can see here, segment zero, we only turn that off. Let me jump back to this. This segment is only off when we want to um present a one or present a four. In all other digits we want that segment to be on. So um, we just say, hey, let's turn it off when we want to present a 1 or a 4. And you do that for each segment. So for segment 1, when do you want this segment to be off? Uh, we don't want it to be on when we're trying to do a 5 or 6. So those are those scenarios. So that's exactly how we're going to rebuild our coder. So depending on what you want to display on your 7 segments, you're going to have to rebuild your decoder. Um, so yeah, here we go. How do we code this? So you say, okay, how do I present for segment zero, I want to turn off that segment when we're trying to do a, you know, show a one or a four. Okay, so how do we do that in code? So you say, hey, assign segment zero, and then we just have to create, you know, what is one in binary, uh, in a four-bit binary, I should say. So you can look over to the table here. A one in a one in binary is zero 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 one. So as you can see, whatever we're feeding into that, it needs to be not the most significant bit, not bit number two, not bit number one, but we do want bit number zero, which is not, 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 and then one. Perfect. Okay, and then what about four? Again, you look at the table here, four is our third bit position, so just make sure that every other one is, uh, use that tilde sign for not that one. And then uh, just keep yourself, you know, keep some uh, comments for yourself to to uh, keep sh keep uh, straight what's going on. So, so just do this for. So we did that for segment one. Now we need to do it for segment. Or sorry, we did that for segment zero. Now we need to do it for segment one, two, three, four, five, and six, and such and such. So, same thing. You just isolate that segment and say, hey, how do I represent digit five and six? So again, five, boom, six, boom. So you just code those things out for each one, and eventually, you will do all of your segments. So. Fantastic. If you kind of conceptually understand how that is, is happening, then the rest of it is you just kind of hooking up things, instantiating that idea that we brought up in uh, Lab 1 Part 5, instantiating something, uh, as well as nets or wires, feeding those uh, into the correct parameters, uh, correct locations for your um, instantiated module. So I'm going to just quickly show, like, this one is actually pretty simple. All we have is our switches outside um, for our hex zero switches and our our hex one switches. Those are going to feed into our our decoder seven segment module. Um, we're going to use a wire. Here, I'm going to zoom in here. Let me do that. Yeah, so we can focus. Uh, my head's a little in the way, but sorry. 
Okay, so we feed in a 4-bit, uh, I'm going to call this channel 0, to that, and our decoder is already done, so it's going to tell us exactly, based on these inputs, which segments are going to be uh, driven high or turned off. So I just use this other wire here, which I've declared in the code as, hey, okay, it's a 7-bit wire, which is good because we have a 7-segment display. You wire to each one, and then um, based on that, it will output uh, what we want to see. So, um, and again, we have to do this for not only hex zero, but hex one as well. Oops. Okay. Um, I think I've gone over the conceptuals. Yes. So now let us open up uh, Quartus Prime and let's build this. So again, we want to do a new project. If you don't have that, you can go to New Project Wizard there or here. So let's do this. I'm going to create a new folder for our project to keep everything organized. Let's call it Lab 2 Part 1. And same as the name of the project, Lab 2 Part 1. It's an empty project. We're just going to add our device that we always need to Target FCS E M A five C six. So there it is. All right. I'm not going to use any special tools. Just do a quick review, as always, uh, before you create your project. Looks good to me. All right. We've created it. Oh, it's thinking actually. Okay. Let's make sure we create a new Verilog HTL file. I see it uh, created here. We'll save it later. Again, I have the code. Um, I've been debating whether I should just offer the code or um, if people would want it, uh, they can reach out to me. But uh, I guess in the meantime, I'll offer it. Um, but that may change going forward. Anyways, okay. So we have our design in here. And we need to save this design. Make sure you title it appropriately. Lab 2 Part 1. And you see it's a .v file for a Verilog file. Okay. Now before we progress, I want to make sure to do our assignments. Um, I have gone over previously how to do this quickly. Um, just continue that trend. You know, be efficient. Use your tickle console. Again, if you don't see your console, go to View, Utility Windows, TCL Console. Um, it might pop up in a weird location, but you can always move it to a uh, location that's useful for you. Okay, now that we have done everything, let's compile it and I'll fast forward for you guys. Okay, and we're back. Looks like everything built correctly. Before we progress, let's make sure we we do have warnings, so we'll make sure that nothing is going to be a big issue for us. Um, it uh, doesn't look too bad in our warnings. Yeah, we're not using design constraints for this. Okay. Um, uh, as I mentioned uh, in the previous lab, if we, uh, if you want to look at your, um, just your net list, you can always go to see what we've built, and it looks pretty similar to uh, what I've, uh, the schematic I've made over here as well. So. Uh, just a cool tool to kind of like help you uh, visualize what's actually happening. Here's like the bro breakdown of actual our our decoder, um, how that actually looks um, down at the gate level. So uh, that would be a nightmare to <laughs> to model at the gate level. So uh, definitely happy to use the power of Verilog. Um, okay, now let's program our device again. You can come to this button here, or if we want, we have to remember how we do this. Oh yeah, tools programmer. Make sure it's connected. Um, and if you don't see anything here, just make sure you go to hardware setup and then uh, uh, look for it there. Um, we'll want to auto detect everything. Make sure you choose the right device. For me, that is the DE1 SOC, and that's the first part of the serial number. We want to add our, our output file, so let's choose that. We can say add file. Just go into your output files, choose your .sof file, say open. Again, it's going to create a duplicate of something, but just make sure the one that you actually have an output file on is 
there and then delete the excessive one here. And now we'll just uh, program it. Okay, 100% successful. We, I'm, I'm going to do a zoom in version for you as well. So I'm going to test a few scenarios. I want to make sure that uh, uh, everything outputs correctly. So let's let's uh, choose a uh, a one on hex zero. So we got one, and then also one on hex uh, hex one. Cool. So it's outputting one one or eleven. Uh, let's do let's max it out. So let's just go nine. Okay. Um, now, as you remember in the lab, they said there's these don't care conditions. So let's test that to make sure we see what happens. And since we didn't turn off any of those segments, or since we didn't consider them in our in our decoder, uh, if you think back, we're not driving any of those segments high for those scenarios. So we're not we're not turning anything off. So what we should see is all of the segments turned on. We should see all of these segments on, which will just be an eight. So we should see eights, right? So let's test that. I'm just going to bump this up. One. Yep, we see eights. So we just put them all on and just eight nonstop. Cool. So, so it's behaving like we want it to. Uh, very cool and awesome. Yeah, and that's all I had, everybody. And you know, feel free to leave me a comment if you think uh, there's something I could do better or uh, something I could explain more. Or if you have questions, feel free to do that. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I have. Let's jump into uh, part two. All right, take care.